Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic as ever to bring you along this exciting journey of setting up this workshop here in Montana, the new workshop. I'm thrilled to bring you along. We have a lot to do. We have already got started with a lot of tidying, but before we jump in, I want to thank today's sponsor, which is GlassesUSA.com. They take all the hassle out of buying glasses because you can now do it online where their frames and lenses start at just $30 a pair. It's an unbelievable price and GlassesUSA.com has a phenomenal section. The glasses I'm wearing here are their Western glasses in tortoise and I absolutely love these. They do a great job and I'm thrilled to be wearing them every single day. Thank you GlassesUSA.com for sponsoring the video and giving you guys a special offer. When you click the link in the description, hit that, you're gonna get a good deal. Thank you for sponsoring the video, GlassesUSA.com. Thank you guys for watching. We're gonna jump right into it. So Will's already been getting to work helping us get this workshop tidy. It looks great so far. This is what that looked like. There's still a lot for us to do. This area here especially, what's gonna be the forging area, it's still a little bit of a mess. So I think we need to kind of consolidate stuff into a corner, push the hydraulic press back where it lives, clear some space. Also, We do need to get it off the pallet. And so that's something we can do right now, get this thing off the pallet, then, as you know, we're trying to do the fun thing first. What we should do is we should do this. We should organize this, push it into the corner, then we should get it off the pallet well, we need to have and get the press space, in place. No, we need the, we, no, no. We, we, let's do this first. By the way, if you haven't seen this, our electrician had a little look at the coolant pump. This bandsaw now has coolant, which is just fantastic. So the press is in place. You'll see we put these leveling feet here on the bottom and uh, that's pretty nice. It means that actually, if we ever need to move the press in the future, it's as simple as getting a pallet truck underneath it, putting some blocking, lifting it up and scooting it around the workshop. This is not something that we need to worry about bolting to the ground since all it does is squeeze. And just in case you forgot what it does, it squeezes, that's pretty cool. You'll notice I've tucked this nice and close to the power hammer. One of the things I learned in my old shop, I had this big workspace. I then put tools in it and I spread the tools out so that it would look nice for video, so it would look nice to film in. Well, the problem was it didn't make it nice to work in. And so what I've tried to do here is cram things in much tighter. So the hydraulic press, which is gonna be operated from here, is very close to the power hammer, which is gonna be operated from here. I'm making things as close as possible so that we can make the most of this pad on the day that, you know, maybe we get another power hammer and put it here. And also, so we just make the most of the space as a whole here in the workshop, trying to condense things and not go crazy using all the space that we have available to us while we don't have all the tools that we're gonna have. One other thing to note, a little bit of MDF blocking. This is an incredibly useful tool to have in the workshop. I have used these MDF squares so much in setting up this workshop, using them as little half inch spaces to use as blocking when we're lifting things up off the ground. It's not super strong, it's only MDF, but having a good stack of MDF blocking, highly recommend it anytime you've got to move any weight around in the workshop. We're gonna to continue to thank our sponsor today, which is glassesusa.com. These are their Westerns in tortoise, this kind of brown color, which I really like, and they have just an unbelievable selection of other glasses to choose from, like these Westerns in black. And one of the great things about going to glassesusa.com is you're gonna be able to use their virtual try-on tool so that you can take a picture of your face, you pick out where the pupils are, and then you'll be able to see how all the glasses are gonna look on your face. It's pretty awesome. Muse M8071, Muse M Classic. And for the sunny, snowy days here in Montana, I have been finding that the Ototo Adelaides, what well, these are, have been uh, just fantastic. I really like these. Very nice and light, and of course, these are in prescription, which is just fantastic, because if you're blind as a bat like me, you gotta be able to see when you're wearing your sunglasses. They have an unbelievable range of glasses. Check them out. Again, frame start at only 30 bucks, and if you hit my link in the description down below, you're going to be able to get a fantastic deal from them. I remember shopping with 
them is risk-free because they have free shipping and returns as well as a 100% money back guarantee within 14 days of delivery. Thank you Glasses USA for sponsoring this video. Again, we're gonna keep rolling with the rest of this episode and I want to let you in on what is gonna be an exciting first project here in the workshop. Will has been working on some designs. He's been sketching here in the office. So do you wanna spill the beans, Will? <laughs> what are we looking at here? We are looking at a revision and a design for a US Civil War era dress cavalry saber. How awesome is that? So it's not just your layman's, you know, every man's cavalry saber. It's going to be decked out with silver and gold and jewels. Oh my goodness. And all kinds of fun stuff. And I'm starting to get good. flashbacks of that Viking sword build. And you know what? It feels really really good. This is, this is gonna be next level. This is just a rough iteration. Design phase numero uno. The beginning of designing this cavalry saber. We've got a research presentation that we've been looking through ideas on. We are very excited about this. It is T minus two days to project start, which makes me feel very nervous. All right, so it's the next morning. Now we've got our coffee. We've got a couple projects to work on. First one being we're gonna make up some stands for the two by 48 grinders that Alec brought over from England. So right now the grinders are just sitting here on the floor and we've gotta make up a couple stands that these swiveling mounts can bolt to. So it's gonna have a plate on the floor and then some square tubing and then another plate uh, big enough for this to get bolted onto. So this is just the rough sketch that Alec did showing what he did in the UK. Uh, and so I think as far as we know, the, uh, the pedestal or the square tubing is gonna end up being about 30 inches tall. And then we're gonna need to do a pretty decent sized piece of plate on the underside there. Looks like a little bit of gusseting as well uh, that will just burn out with the plasma cutter. He also wants a piece of angle iron welded on the underside of the top plate for the VFD to be mounted to. We've got all of the pieces that we need to be cut, cut up. We've got the posts that we're gonna use for both stands. We've got the top and bottom plates and then the gussets as well. So what we need to do now, deburr the posts, clean up the top plates and then drill the holes both so that the angle pivoting thing can be bolted to it and also so that we can bolt into the floor. machines welded up with some square tubing and gussets. We gotta play with the plasma cutter. Uh, got a little bit better at welding vertically and stuff like that. It was a good bit of fun overall. They're ready to, this one needs a motor and a bunch of other junk and stuff. Which I already have ordered. We've got VFDs on the way so that we can not only have a motor on this grinder right here. This is one of the grinders that I used to sell, but also a motor on this grinder right here. You might be hearing a little bit more about that in the future. I love these machines. 
These are all built by my friend Ewan from 84 Engineering. Hell the product, this is the beast that I have been using for the last year and a half, all the way from the UK. Since the variable frequency drive runs on 240, 50 or 60 volts, it's really practical because we have a 220 outlet right there, which means I can go ahead and take my, uh, my scissors right here, cut this off, we can wire it up for a US plug right there, and that's gonna work just fine. It's the benefits of the VFD. We need to figure out exactly where we want these to go before we bolt them down, but after that, we're gonna have four grinders in here. It's gonna be insane. It's gonna be off the hook. It's gonna be the opposite of a grind, really. It's gonna be quite the smooth, satin, buffed experience as opposed to a grind. The opposite of that sentence, huh? <laughs> So while Will has been working on these TIE Fighter belt grinder stands or... They look like a Sauron's tower from Lord of the Rings. Well, Will's been working on those. I have been working in that side of the shop, getting some lighting set up, as well as getting my microscope set up and getting the bench set up. It looks amazing, and here is some footage from that. That this just looks unbelievable with the extra lights. We've got lights up here, video lights. We have a video light right there, and then back over this way, we've got a light up on that mezzanine as well as a uh, light diffuser. Very high tech mount up there. Very high tech. It's a two by four with a hole in it. Hopefully, the light is a little bit softer with the diffuser, and hopefully, when we're here working on something at a vice. It's nicely lit, not only for us to be able to see while we're working, which is extremely important, but also so we can make YouTube videos because we make YouTube videos here. So we gotta make sure it's nicely lit with these expensive- Wait, wait, wait. Making YouTube videos? So over here, I have my microscope. I don't know if this is the final place for it, but I got my microscope. I got a little bit of my setup going on. I've got my anvil and my hammer in case I need to do any benchtop forging. We have compressed air running right here, which, uh, which might end up proving rather useful for some tools that might end up here. <clears throat> we have vices, granite block, pillar drill, or as they say here in the colony, post drill? Drill press? Drill press. Crazy Americans. At Will's bench, do you want to run them through the rough, rough setup so far? Sure thing, we got a swivel jaw vise over here for holding oblong shaped objects up high, which is very handy for doing file work and stuff like that. I like that height. And we've got a cutting mat. We have the banana storage up here, my PPE, paper towel roll, my personal sandpaper for working on personal projects, a couple hammers, really cool antique toolbox. I've got some fun little toys in here, like this little hand vise, and I've got some dividers and, and different things in here. I've got my got my mini hammer collection in here for hammering on mini things, and my favorite wait, 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 pliers. Wait. You use the mini hammer connection for hammering on mini things? Believe it or not, yes I do. Not micro things? No, not micro things. That was a terrible joke. I'm, what I, was I, the, I was trying to make something, I was trying to make funny and, and I didn't do it. So, we'll get this filled up with all sorts of fun stuff that I'll be able to use. I've got my personal projects that I'm working on down here, stuff like that. And then uh, another another vise over here that'll probably be used mainly for hand sanding. Got a, uh, a pretty simple block, it's just a piece of uh, I don't know, some sort of wood. I oh, just... is this uh, is this that fancy pine wood that you buy from a hardware store? It's actually cherry, but I think you're right. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So okay, don't put that in. That's a, I'm terrible. <laughs> just I'm just destroying this video. I'm sorry. <laughs> so that'll clamp right in there. So then we've got a good height here for hand sanding, right with your arms at bent at kind of like a 90 degree angle. It's 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 a good height for it. It's a good spot. It's a good spot. And this looks amazing right here stuff on the walls, starting to feel like home, but you know how this is gonna feel even better? Swords? Flags. Flags! Yeah, we need more flags up! And we got a whole load of flags, so I think we're gonna spend, uh, spend a few moments putting up some flags. Sounds like a plan to me. Sounds like a hell of a plan, sounds like a flag. <laughs> If I may say so myself, I think this looks rather fantastic. Apart from the South Africa flag, it's a little too late in the day and a little too high up the ladder for me to, for me to fix that. That's gonna get done tomorrow with, with fresher legs. But this wall is starting to look like something... Wait, what? Hey, you shrunk me! What'd you do that for? 
And why did you go here? Oh no. Texas worked out, he got shrunk. You dang right I did, and this is not fair. Uh oh, we got Texas upset. Oh boy. That's gonna be it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please do hit the link in the description for a special offer from glassesusa.com. Get yourself a great pair of glasses. And remember, they also do Ray-Bans if you need to look particularly cool. So go save some money and get yourself a great pair of glasses. Thank you guys so much. I can't wait to see you on the next episode. And uh, make sure you stay tuned for that because we're about to get cracking on our first big project here. Thank you guys so much. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.